Hey fam, how y'all doing? I'm doing a quick sound check. Yeah, let's lower that, let's lower that. Hey fam, how y'all doing? My name is Cole and welcome to Orgasis. Today we're playing Minotaur Hotel. Today we're doing Mental Hotel. I don't know what we did last time, but like he got an upgrade. He blew up a little bit. He blew up. I'm such a pervert. I I looked where where I was supposed to be looking. Um. Why is hold on? Both okay. I got two up. Okay, okay. I'm sorry for the dissonance. I'm sorry for the for the chaos. I'm sorry for the discourse. I know I shouldn't have clicked it twice. We're gonna go over time today. We're gonna fix this. There we go. I was just making sure that it loaded up. You know, this sound is really loud for me. Like it's in my ear and it's, it's actually distracting me. I think I'm just trying to get my head together and it's not really letting me. <laughs> menu, menu. Um, Let's lower you to here. Let's do it right here. What are we doing? What's the last thing? My adoptive father was King Minos. Assuming I wasn't behaving, he treated me well for the most part because I was sacred. Okay, sacred. That's your, your adoptive father, okay. Then I got sent to the labyrinth. That's another thing. I was thinking about how this game. My oh, bad. I was thinking about how this. I'm drinking water. I was thinking about how this game is. Um, they have a Starion. Uh, what's the word? Advertised with this brown fur. That's how the story starts, and that's how we meet him. That's how we meet him as well. And his past. In his past, he has white fur, and I believe black fur. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling anything. I'm just thinking about like the way he's shown and we'll get there when we get there because I feel like I don't want to say the next part. <laughs> I guess we'll get there when we get there. We'll talk about it more in depth. We'll talk about it more in depth. Let's just keep going. Um, I don't remember how old I was then. Maybe 12 or so. My sister, uh, Ariane, Ar Ariand? Ariand? Ariande? I don't know. Uh, convince father. Oh, that's your sister. If you just told me how old your sister is, that's some petty ass shit, sis. She said, I will become dangerous. It took a while, but he was swayed. I was carted off and left there with only an axe to fend for myself in that labyrinth built by the artisan Daedalus. Like, bruh, who's, why, why, what, 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 what she have against you like that? That's what life for me was like in Crete. It isn't, oh, isn't it? Isn't it curious how we hold on to memories of childhood? I've existed for thousands of years now. Yeah, I get that. Especially the negative ones. I died young before my 20th birthday, damn. And yet so much of who I am comes from those two decades. I often wonder what life would be, would have been like were I not a hybrid monster. <clears throat> For starters, mother wouldn't have lost her mind. My sister wouldn't have tried convincing father to send me off. Yes, she would, she, it'd just be under a different pretext. She don't like your ass. <laughs> I, I would have had a normal childhood. Make no mistake, life back then was not easy and dying young was not out of, out of the ordinary. A land like Crete had, had to keep itself armed too. Okay. Had I been born fully human, I could have died young by disease or in early adult, adulthood in combat. Hmm. 
Still, that would have been preferable to what I went through. Had I not been sent off to the labyrinth, the gods would not have sentenced me for my cowardice. I'd still be in Hades in the Asphodel Meadows where I was, where I was supposed to be. Hmm. Maybe you wouldn't end it up there if you was just human, because they probably would have treated you with honor and respect. And if you died in battle, you would have gotten a different, like, Hades sentence. Like, you probably would have been, like, on a different, like, air quotes floor. But anyway. Hades. Perhaps Master wished for me to tell happy memories of, happy memories of Crete. I do have a few. Quite a few. But I have more from Hades. I have more from Hades, okay. I was welcome there, as all souls are. Of course, I was no hero and would never see the Elsian fields. That's where heroes went to. But as fall as fall as as fall <laughs> as faldo as faldo. I, I don't know why I'm thinking two S's. But the as faldo meadows where regular souls are sentenced to was quite pleasant. I even had a job there. The god of the underworld picked me to take part in the border control. It was a simple enough duty, patrolling the frontier to catch souls attempting to escape. Hey. Okay, okay, okay. I'm thinking about like the other game Hades, the, na the game Hades. Like I'm thinking about that right now. I shared housing with a cousin. I never even knew I had a cousin until then. Oh. His name was Garyon. Oh, yeah. Garyon? I think so. And we had a lot in common. The god of the underworld, Lord Hades himself, took a liking to me. We'd often train together, and he taught me the underworld's fighting style. Choose your fighting style, eh? <laughs> Select your character. Select your fighting style. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Asterion looks down to the counter and drops his fingers on it, lost in thought. I was a good patrolman. I wouldn't have mis I wouldn't have minded staying there. That's about it, I suppose. Y'all lost his voice, it's fine. <laughs> Does Master have any other questions? I was asking questions. Okay. 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 What's your favorite memory? My, my favorite memory. Now that's a tough question. Asterion drinks more of his wine, then rubs his hand against the counter. He sighs, looks to you, then looks back down again a few times. Listen, let, we're too early. We're in chapter four. We're too early for me to be the answer. Come on. <laughs> Very hard question, but I think I know. There was a master, Sir Bernard. He was the labyrinth's lord for a few, for few decades and then passed it down to his son, Sir Robert. When Sir, Ber was Sir, Bernard, okay, when Sir Bernard was on his deathbed, his son transferred ownership of the hotel back to him for a day. Oh. As the hotel's returning master, Sir Bernard wrote and signed a a contract except it was just a letter to me thanking me for everything so Robert took over again of course and he prepared me something too I had helped him raise I've I had helped raise him you see okay I got it I had helped raise him you see and he gathered all his childhood drawings of me and signed them as a contract as well. That's so cute. Contracts are everlasting, unless explicitly revoked, so their contracts will last forever. They can't be burned or torn apart. Nothing will destroy them. I wonder if we could like pick up some of these masters from Hades. Or just go to the, you know, pay a little visit. Whatever afterlife they're in, pay a little visit. Get some of these more oppressive contracts revoked. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just saying. Uh, part, nothing will destroy them. That is my dearest memory, 
Robert's and Bernard's gifts to me. Right, we got our five more minutes, five more minutes. The contracts, they are everlasting. But I know Clement. Clement? Clement. <laughs> but I know Clement tore. Ah, I'll get it right next, next time. <laughs> tore apart the ledger where we kept them. Hmm. What does that mean? They must be hidden, hidden away somewhere. Eventually I'll find them again, even if it takes me years. Right. Because he can't, he wouldn't be able to tear apart the ledger if that was some of his content. Well, probably still the ledger, but like not every page in the ledger is some of the pages are contracts. Anyway, they must be hidden away somewhere. Eventually, I'll find them again, even if it takes me years. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me, y'all. After all, <laughs> I have all the time in the world, don't I? Precious, precious man. Um, the Minotaur takes yet another swig of his wine. He sways left and right, his eyes half closed. I only recorded this one first, because it's gonna go up on Monday. I definitely need more water. I have another memory, just as sweet. When I was in the underworld, I made friends. One of them gifted me with the statue of a red ox. He was a herder in life. I was, it was fitting, of course. I brought it with me to this place, and only thing I managed to bring, the the only thing I managed to bring. It was supposed to be in my room, but again, come on. I was loved. The letters and the statue, I cherished them dear dearly. But love needs no gifts to be remembered. Oh, <laughs> my heart. The serial looks down again. He holds the wine bottle against his chest. Okay. When a conversation naturally exhausts itself, you both let uh, inertia carry you into a comfortable silence. Don't make it hug this man yet. The warm buzz of alcohol in your system does much to ease the day's drudgery. Okay. As does the newly rekindled hearth, hearth fires uh, con convivial or convivial. Convivial crackle. Convical. Uh, not a C is a V, so con convivial. I'll look it up on Google. <laughs> the seats bear your weight admirably, despite their age, and the rustic scent of the wood smoke and fine leather up upholstery makes relax relaxation an effortless, as effortless as breathing. I am reading way too fast. <laughs> I'm making assumptions. Though you and Asterion are the only current occupants of the lounge, things seem a little live livelier than the stark row of unclaimed stools would suggest. With the hotel's improving condition, each one brims over with potential for future patrons to serve. There's something about a firelight's ability to captivate the heart that harkens back to time immemorial. For shy. <laughs> As though written into your bones by the struggles of your an ancestors, the dancing shadows stir an impulse in your mind. Wait. Impulse that your mind can only dimly direct. My bad, y'all. For a moment, Asterion's presence is so insubstantial that you feel along with your thoughts. Out of the corner of your eye, you see his bovine brow crease, eyes slowly flicking back and forth between you and the fireplace. His mouth opens soundlessly for a moment, but closes just as quickly, as though the, su the subtlest uh, perturbation, like perturb, perturbation, of the air would be enough to shadow, shatter the idyllic scene. In the soft light, Asterion's countenance grows soulful and then cold and lucid. Perhaps a quick, a quirk, perhaps as a quirk of his immortal body, he seems to sober up more quickly than you were, ex we were expecting. His gaze finally settles on a fire with the stone-faced focus of a trained guard. 
alert, but betraying no further sign of his feelings. You cannot say how many hours you two have spent before the fireplace, looking with a, looking with simple, rapt attention on the flame at the flame. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Heedless of the passage of time, the greedy moment stretches on as long as the compulsions of your biology will allow it to. The feeling of your chin hitting your chest eventually jolts you from the quiet uh, reverie. I think it's reverie. Reverie. You didn't even notice you were starting to nod off. And that's where we're going to pause. <laughs> I'm sorry y'all for messing up so much, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'll get, I'll get back used to it the more episodes I do. But um, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know what I'm filming I do. Also, leave some down in the comments. Tell me what y'all think about this game so far. Um, what else? If you enjoyed this game, right? And you'd like to play it for yourself, you can do so via the link in the pinned comment. Uh, I stream every Saturday and Sunday at 8 p.m. and 12 p.m. Eastern Time, respectively. I believe that is all I have to say. So I'll see you guys in the next video.